Hello, it is Wednesday, April 6th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle, so um, well, I'm going to say maybe a little a little more difficult than yesterday's, but I think yesterday's was found to be quite difficult for a Tuesday by many people, which I entirely understand. I was sort of uh, intuited that um, while solving it, I think in part because there were so many uh, very specific American cultural references. And there's a there's a comment to that effect that I'll read um, later during the normal yesterday's clues bits. But for now, let's get on to this Wednesday puzzle, see if we can see if, see if I don't know, if everyone fares a little better with this one. So, uh, but first, a few things to mention, as, as always. Uh, this edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Overfull Hitbox, D.W. Diedrich, sorry, B.W. Diedrich, I apologize, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for bringing us this edition, for supporting this channel and this series and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. So thank you very much for that. And of course, as benefactors, um, you can get access to the Daily Solve um, Let's Check the Crosses mug. And any level of the uh, Patreon grants you access to the full suite of bonus video solves that have gone up to date and the new ones that go up each week. So uh, definitely towards the end of this week, I need to catch up on some of those things. There's the monthly puzzle, there's the uh, Constructor's Corner, Community Created Crosswords to Solve. So I, yeah, I do, there are several videos I'd like to do uh, in, in, the, in the coming week. So look forward to those. And um, I suppose that's it. Do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. I always forget to mention that. So do, do that. Uh, please, thank you. <laughs> do that, I said, ordering you. No, it's a request not an order, but thank you if you have done so. And let's move on to today's puzzle. Um, this is a Wednesday puzzle, as I said. It was constructed by Damon Kulzinski, who has constructed several dozen New York Times crosswords, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, who will be themed in some way. So let's go. Oh, it will be themed in some way, and immediately we are confronted with an asterisk, a starred clue, and that probably means it will relate to um, to the theme. Actually, is there? Uh, yes, this is an this is an unusual. Um, this crossword has unusual dimensions, doesn't it? It looks like it's um, it's fifteen cells in height, which is typical but it looks like it's 16 cells in width. It looked a little bit squished and I wasn't sure in which, I wasn't sure if it was um, a little bit uh, shorter in the height department or a little bit longer in the width department and it is the latter. So yeah, interesting. I wonder what that means. And anyway, also we have leave briefly and this other, ah, so right away we've been pointed to our revealer, which says punctuation mark missing in Let's Eat People, at least one would hope, as well as from the starred clues. Well, I think we can put this in immediately, actually. It would be a comma, because, of course, if you would say, let's eat people, what it means is we would like to consume other human beings, which is hopefully not what one would say, as it, as it indicates, but rather let's eat, comma, people. So comma. And it is also missing from the starred clues. So leave briefly. Um, oh, I'm not sure. I wish I could just, I wish I could jump straight to that, but I don't know that I can. So let's, um, animals that become different animals when their first letters change to an M. Well, I suppose that means we can be certain of one thing, and that's that this word does not already start with an M. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's keep going. Follow, could be tail, maybe. Underhanded tactics, Trickery, maybe. Could be trickery. Let's try tail and trickery and see if, if anything comes from this. Not manually operated. Auto, perhaps, for automatic. And mystical character. A rune. I don't really know if that qualifies as mystical. That, that would be character in the sense of a character meaning a letter. Uh, I mean, Hankering could be an itch. This is actually looking like it might work out. I think I, I think I got fairly lucky with trickery and tail, to be honest. It sounds like a phrase. Bring on. Incur a cost, for instance. And so then rune 
and longtime news anchor Jim Lehrer, I recognize. That's probably pretty culturally specific as well. Final say. And I don't really know what this is. I don't really, yeah, I'm not very, I'm not doing very well with these missing comma things, am I? Coral-based ecosystems are reefs. A fleeting moment could be a sec, maybe? Just one sec? Ah, and Pioneer and Color TV must be RCA, which is uh, an electronics brand. They make TVs and video cassette recorders and things like that. Uh, seeing the other side of the matter. Something face, dealing with the other face of a coin or something. Final say. And blunted blades. Blunted blades. Are they epées? Used in fencing and so not, obviously not, um, you know, deadly, not sharpened like a, like a sword meant for fatal combat. Colorful freshwater fish, a tetra, I think. And don't forget about me. It could be a hem, maybe you clearing your throat in order to call attention to yourself. Don't forget about me. And the brackets around that will mean this is a, this is non-verbal. So it still could be uh, vocal, still something that comes out of your mouth, but not not verbal, not not words per se. Celeb with a good friend named Gail. Absolutely no idea what that means. Celeb with a good friend named Gail. I don't know. Oprah, I guess? I'm not sure who, who Gail is. I'm sorry. But uh, just based on the crosses, I'm guessing that's Oprah. So seeing the other side of the matter. And cereal for kids. Oh, here, here's another, I think probably, probably pretty American thing. Trix Cereal, which has a famous series of um, television advertisements that uh, deal with tricks being for kids, not rabbits, which is <laughs> sort of an odd, uh, an odd, uh, I don't know, delineation, but there we have it. Musical form heard in some Bollywood films could be raga, an Indian musical form. And a, sub a subdued hue could be beige, an off-white color. Oh, to be fair, I was really caught off guard by, um, not caught off guard, but I was, I was put on the wrong track, I guess, more accurately, by thinking the other side of the matter had something to do with a face. Yeah, not, 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 the right, not the right direction. So seeing the other side of the matter is to be fair. And then final say, course exam. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was completely misinterpreting how this works. I thought the comma needed to be in the answer to make sense, but no, it probably even says punctuation mark missing in Let's Eat People as well as from the starred clues. Yes, it's missing from the clues, not the answer. I'm sorry about that. So this is final comma say, a course exam, a course. So in other words, it's not the final say, in other words, the final decision, rather it's um, an example of a final. It's a final, say, a course exam. So let's look at this again. So leave, comma, briefly, aha. So maybe a holiday or vacation or a vacay, perhaps, briefly. Um, briefly meaning we're going to abbreviate or contract the word in some way. In this case, maybe make it a bit more um, informal. And then does that help with animals that become different? Oh, voles and moles. There we go. So animals that become different animals when their first letter is changed to an M. So voles is our particular animal, and uh, a mole is also an animal when we change the V to an M. Great. Okay. Midwest hub. Ah, here's another, another uh, bit of American cultural context. We have a hub. I'm assuming this means an airport, a major airport, an airport hub. And in this case, it would be Chicago's, well, one of Chicago's airports, Chicago, Chicago O'Hare International Airport. Oodles of something could be a heap of something. Food often served in ball form. Cantaloupe, melon, you could have melon, melon baller. Cantaloupe. And a brava elicitor. An aria, you could have um, an opera singer sing an aria, which tends to have a featured singer. 
And then if it's a if it's a woman singing, you say brava, brava, as opposed to bravo. Okay, busy bodies are yentas. And here we have world leader born Vladimir Ilyich uh, Ulyanov, uh, who is Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. Or Vladimir Ilyich Ilyanov. And to seriously vex somebody is to eat at them. How best to determine consent would be to ask, I suppose. Straightforward enough. Um, anyway, so this busybodies, this comes up not infrequently in the crossword. Yentas, it's a bit of Yiddish, I suppose. And um, yeah, bu busybody, I guess uh, I, I think of a yenta as being a woman, um, specifically. I don't know if that's necessary. I think it is. And then here we have went the distance. Could be lasted. Yeah, I lasted a while. I went the distance. Move about could be step, maybe? Not sure about that. What about this? Nation on the Gulf of Oman. It doesn't look right. So if this were, is it Iraq or Iran? And this, would, this could be stir, move about. Some playgrounds, some playground attendants. Dads, I suppose. And springs opposite. Springs opposite. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Let's let's uh, go back to solving the regular across clues here. Start of all Washington DZ zip codes. Oh, I don't know, but it'll be a number because zip codes are um, five digit numerical codes, uh, US postcodes. Um, well, what could it be? It could be one, two, six. It could be one, two, or six. Those are really the only options because it needs to be a digit that'll fit in three letters. Uh, not conned by could be on to. So that would suggest this is two. How about that? And a pixie stick question mark. So the question mark means it's a bit of pun or wordplay going on. And I guess that's because, why is that? So Pixie Sticks is a candy, but it's not spelled this way. But maybe the constructor is saying, well, you might still think of the candy. So I'm going to put the question mark to help you out and indicate you should be thinking about it a different way. Anyway, it's presumably wand, a stick that a pixie might have, a wand, magic wand. Okay, and what about this Wonderland twin? Uh, so this refers to the twins Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Lewis Carroll's um, Alice in Wonderland or Through the Looking Glass. So Tweedledum. Tweedledum is the one is the one we're looking for because we fortunately have comma there. Otherwise, we would have had to stop at Tweedled and then fill it in later. What about this? This looks... Oh, a mulligan is a redo in, I think, various games and sports. A brutish sort could be an ogre. And what was this? Did we look at this? No. Like some quad cities residents. Iowan. I don't think I know the quad cities, so I'm glad I got that with crosses. <laughs> this looks like laundry detergent. All for one. Ah, okay. All for one. So an example. All is an example of, of this thing. Um, so all is, I guess, a laundry detergent brand? That sort of sounds familiar. Um. Laundry detergent, all for one, because we, uh, this is one of our theme clues. And so we need to insert a comma into here. And it probably wouldn't be all for comma one. It doesn't really make sense. Okay, a minor anomaly could be a blip. You have a blip in the data. Uh, shiny fabric. I'm not sure right offhand. Contingent of like minded voters. You could vote in a block uh, around a particular issue or something. Uh, doxycycline target. It must be acne based on the fills. I'm not familiar with doxy, uh, doxycycline, but that must be what it does. Uh, well, it must be what it relates to. And, oh, shiny fabric lame, right? L-A-M-E, lame. That, that looks correct. Um, I don't know what sort of 70s fashion and a lot of that sort of thing. And here we have blank we Reese, P we Reese. Uh, I'm not sure who that is, but that's <laughs> that's fine. Uh, it looks like it must be correct. 
And uh, the Louvre pyramid architect is I.M. Pei, the great, the great architect who I think passed away recently. I'm very sorry if that's not the case, and I'm and and he's still alive. I'm sorry if so. But uh, anyway, many many iconic buildings designed by I.M. Pei. No good backstabbing scoundrel, a dirty dog maybe. Feels though this could probably be other things, so I should be a little bit careful around this. So let's let's check some crosses immediately. Fundraising group for the GOP. Um, the Republican National Committee, I think. It's probably what this was referring to. I mean, I'm sure there are many more obscure fundraising groups for any political party, but I would be surprised if they made it into the crossword. So that's my guess. So I guess I can also check the crosses on there. Pedagogic organization and unfounded rumor. I don't know. Let's keep looking at the crosses on Dirty Dog just to just to be clear, since RNC isn't necessarily 100% lock. Subs could be could be this could be a noun or a verb. Could be substitute. Could be substitutes. Well, that in itself could be a noun or a verb. You could substitute for somebody, or you could be a substitute or plural substitutes. Um, but it could also be obviously a submarine or a submarine sandwich, I guess. Um, but it'll probably end with an S in any case. Me and Bobby Blank, posthumous number one hit for Janis Joplin. Is it Seal? And then here we have flies frequently. So flies, comma, frequently, because it's one of our theme clues. So flies, comma, frequently. Not sure. And then here, broadcast again. Okay, this maybe isn't Dirty Dog, because broadcast again, I would assume to be re-air. We're going to air something. Oh, so a dirty rat would be a no good backstabbing scoundrel. That actually does probably match a little bit more closely, because rat has connotations in, you know, organized crime and that sort of thing. Okay, blank luck. Auto luck? Not sure. Get go, right from the get go, right from the start. And singer songwriter Guthrie Arlo Guthrie. Um, hmm. Oh, onset. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Similarly, right from the get go, right from the onset. Uh, blindingly bright, in a colloquial sense, neon. You could have neon neon lights. You could describe. Oh, it was blinding neon neon light. Even though obviously it doesn't. A neon light doesn't need to be blindingly bright. Uh, it's often used that way metaphorically in language. DC9. This will be a sports team, I assume. I assume this means nine, nine team members. Um, flies frequently. Flies free. Oh, annoyances. There we go. And what about this? Have we looked at this? No. State capital in the so-called Treasure Valley. Boy, this week is really big on the... Um, the American cultural references, isn't it? That's really been, it's been unusually frequent. So based on the crosses, I'm assuming Boise. Um, I'm not familiar with geographically with the Treasure Valley, so I'm sorry about that, but this would be Boise, Idaho. And, oh, lots of luck. There we go. And then DC9 are the Nats, so it must be the Nationals. And what about this? BTs, that looks strange. Subs. Uh... Not sure. Pedagogic organization. National Endowment for the Arts. Or National Teaching Association, actually, would make more sense. National Teachers Association's pedagogic organization. What is this, then? Not really sure what's going on here. What about this? Unfounded rumor. A canard. Is this definitely Boise? Lots of luck looks right. Oh, subs. Oh, B team. I uh, that was a, 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 quite a mistake I made. I thought I assumed because this was subs, it was going to need to be plural, or it was going to need to to have an S at the end of of the the verb that it's standing in for to match to to match up with subs. Um, but I was wrong because it's a collective noun. So it's it's plural in the sense that B team um, comprises several people. It's plural people, but in a single team. 
a team of subs would be the B team substitutes. So I really threw myself off there. Um, anyway, so this is NEA. I don't know. Is that National Endowment for the Arts or is it something else? I'm not actually sure. Um, is there another NEA probably? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there are many NEAs worldwide. Anyway, oh no, it's not Bobby Seal. Me and Bobby, Bobby Mc, McPhee, I sort of recognize this and I can't, McPhee or McG or something. Uh, it must be McG, yeah. Farming prefix would be agri, presumably. Agricultural, agri-food. And political commentator Joy. Don't think I know that person. Buffalo's County. Buffalo, New York, Erie, New York, Erie County, I think probably the case. Boy, look at all this. Very, very high on the, uh, the um, U.S. references this week. Monopoly Holding could be a deed. And Joy Reed, maybe. Is that? This doesn't look right. How bizarre. Oh, that's odd. So agro rather than agro. Fair enough, yeah. Just depends what you're putting it, putting it in front of. And Joy Reed. Okay, yeah. So how bizarre. That's odd. That all looks fine. A bit of body ink could be a tat, a tattoo. And Witty Mort could be Mort Saul. Is a uh, famous comedian, again, an American comedian. Um, an old... Uh, old timey, not old timey, it's maybe the wrong way to put it, but uh, not current. Okay, spring's opposite. Oh, is this uh, like spring tide and neap tide? Neap, is that what I'm looking for there? I think it probably is. And if one didn't fail a course, for instance, one passed, passed the course. And Disney's Queen of Arendelle must be Elsa from Frozen. And then unchanging could be static. Something is static. It doesn't change. She released 30 in 21. I think Adele's records are, are those are presumably her age at the time of recording, I would imagine. Um, pet in the town of Bedrock. What does that mean? Oh, is that um, the Flintstones? I bet. I bet that's what that is. Is it Dino for dinosaur? There was a bit, they had a big dinosaur pet, right? Word with wave and pool, tidal wave and tidal pool. And Arctic people are the Inuit. Something staked is a claim. You could stake a claim. And a difference symbol in math is a delta. You refer to the delta as the change often. You, that happens often in, in mathematical discussions, but also I think in general casual speech, depending on the topic. And anyway, TV screen type for short is an LCD, a liquid crystal display. And there we go. So there's the Wednesday puzzle. I would say maybe a slightly less American puzzle than yesterday, but maybe more than the average, at least in terms of what we've been solving recently. We had Chicago, O'Hare, Oprah, although Oprah's... So this is a funny one because Oprah is obviously, um, I would imagine, pretty relatively globally famous. I mean, not as much as she would be in the United States, but still pretty, pretty global celebrity. And yet I have no idea what this, what this is about. So I just got it purely through Oprah being a, a well-known name. Um, we had RCA, which I presume is an American brand. Maybe it's Japanese. I don't know, actually. Um, Iowan. Yeah. The Republican National Committee. Uh, Anyway, the NEA, I presume to be an American organization, whatever it is. Uh, if it is indeed the National Endowment for the Arts, could be something else. Um, anyway, I don't need to go through all of those, but um, yeah, there, there were quite a few. So uh, it might be tricky for folks again, and I'll, I'll, I'll read a comment for someone to that effect today. Not the entire comment, but, but some of it. And let's check out our theme so we had, uh, so I saw this one, <laughs> saw the revealer right off the bat. I, I wonder how they decide when to do that sort of thing. When, because obviously the first thing that happened when I loaded the puzzle, well, actually first I counted, the, why? so why did, oh, it needed to be longer in order to fill in laundry detergent. That's why the grid needed to have one extra cell of width was to fit laundry detergent. And um, presumably because uh, the constructor really wanted this all for one all comma for one. So therefore it needed an example of something that all is. 
in this case, a laundry detergent. And so the grid needed to be elongated to fit that. Anyway, so the first thing that happened upon loading the grid was I noticed it was pointing directly to the revealer. And I wonder how they decide when, they're, when they um, highlight these and sort of connect them in this way. Because they don't, they don't always do that. This could have said something like punctuation mark missing in Let's Eat People as well as from four clues, although that would be much more difficult and maybe not suitable to a Wednesday. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so let's let's look over them. We had uh, leave, so leave briefly or leave briefly, a VK. Final, say, would be a course exam. All, for one, would be a laundry detergent. And flies, frequently, are annoyances. And of course, each of these was a an ordinary phrase in its own right without the comma. So uh, leave briefly, final, say, all for one and flies frequently. And there we have it. There's the Wednesday crossword. Let me know how you fared. And with that, let's look at, I think, just the one, actually, one comment from yesterday's puzzle. At least at the time of recording, I had not, there were not yet any, oops, sorry. There were not yet any comments about uh, anything that I had, uh, any bits of I don't know, misspeaking or, or extra context that was needed. So Michelle McBride Charpentier says, if any American crossword constructors want to know how to avoid frustrating your international audience with answers that can only be gotten through brute force of trying every letter in the alphabet, this puzzle has a good example of what not to do. Iona seems like a random abbreviation that doesn't follow the blank SU format we're familiar with for universities. So blank state university would be common in the U.S. Um... And then Amana is an American-only brand name, apparently, with um, uh, kitchen appliances and the like. And uh, Michelle confirmed this by going to the brand's website and looking for the drop-down, letting you select your country. But apparently, uh, Amana doesn't exist in other countries. So there we go. And then uh, Los Gatos was frustrating for being a relatively small town, population 33 thousand and wouldn't know whether it's Los Gatos or Las Gatos if you don't have Spanish knowledge. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, Michelle went, it went into more depth here with all these different answers, but those are those are touching on the uh, on on the um, what was difficult about them for non-American audience. And then Bradley actually followed up and said, as an American, I had the same difficulty with Iona and Los from Los Gatos. The end of my solve came down to a 50-50 guess between an A and an O. I was aware of Amana, but I'm not even sure how widely known it is as a brand in the United States. And yes, that's that's true for me in the sense that I, I, I was only sort of vaguely aware of Amana as a brand. Um, I think, honestly, I'm mainly aware of it through the crossword. So e even a lot of the American cultural references, sometimes I will be primarily familiar with them through the crossword and Amana is one of those. Um, Los Gatos, I was, I was aware of from, from having uh, grown up in California and um, uh, so fortunate in that regard. And Iona, I'm not sure. I think I've probably heard of Iona, but I, I also suspect I've, uh, as a university, I'm more aware of it um, from the crossword than I am through any other means. It is, it, and as Michelle McBride Charpentier points out, it's a Scottish island that whose name was adopted by that university. So anyway, there we, oh, whoops. I forgot to turn the um, spoiler wall on. Well, I'll go back and apply that in the video. So no, no harm, no foul. Okay, and that's it for today's crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back, of course, tomorrow for another edition of the Daily Solve, the Thursday, the, the um, generally speaking, the more ambitious or unusual or amusing theme. So do come back for that. Those are always fun. I hope you do. And until that point, um, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.